You're all squared up there, monkey. Look at your little face. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. It's our shard. Okay. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's Friday. It's used to a problem. We're, we're problemoing it up. Uh, sorry, I'm a minute late. I, I forgot to put on a fancy shirt. I was basically naked. Uh, so here we are. Um, Ryan Cohen tweeted yesterday. He tweeted out, uh, so near and yet so far, which is a phrase we've all heard. I read it and I was like, ugh. <laughs> it completely de deflated. And then somebody, smarter, wiser, more savvy than me, uh, decided to either search or they knew the reference. And it's the name of a song, so near and yet so far, uh, by an artist by the name of Bobby Short, who was popular way, 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 way back in the day. Um, his most recent compilation album is called is The Big Short, The Big Bobby Short, something like that. And, uh, hmm, hmm. The reason I don't know why we're going hmm about it is that the nickname for BBBBY is Bobby. Uh, Cohen has done a couple of Bobby, Bobby things before. Um, not for long was from another artist with the name Bobby. Uh, then there was, um, the, when he, when he, he goes to the Florida Panthers games, the Florida Panthers are owned of course by the founder of virtue and Doug Sifu. Um, and he's a hockey fan. He's Canadian, he lives in Florida. So he goes to Florida Panther games. But when he reposts things from Florida Panthers, it's like someone like one of there was there was a video of of one of the players and the whole crowd was chanting Bobby Bobby Bobby, so that'll give you a little a little hopium for the soul in there. Uh, earthquake in New York, we had a four point three. Was that what it was officially deemed at? Centered right around Bedminster Golf Course. It was almost the epicenter underneath Bedminster West uh, in New Jersey, Trump's Golf Course. Um, very shallow quake, 2.9 miles deep. That is freakishly shallow. Felt across a wide swath of area uh, along the East Coast, mainly because the rocks are really old, very dense, and not too many fault systems uh, uh, exist. So, so there's not much, not much to 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 take up the vibration, um, absorb it. So, like earthquakes on the West Coast, where I am, they're very intense but they're very uh, sh uh, small areas affected in comparison. Whereas East Coast, it's like 800,000 square miles felt felt that little quake. Uh, it freaks everybody out because they're not used to it. Um, but yeah, it happens every once in a while. The, the last decent sized quake on the East Coast was in Virginia, what, about a decade ago, Monkey? It's a five point something. Caused some cracks and foundations and knocked over some furniture. Um, and then the other big news is it sounds like Letitia James in New York, uh, has rejected the bond from Trump, uh, namely on a couple of accounts. One, the insurance company that, uh, uh, is, is guaranteeing the bond, um, isn't registered to do business in New York, so it can't be accepted. On top of that, they don't actually have the financials available to pay the bond. They basically, with liquid assets and cash on hand, they come up with about $130 million, which is not the $175 million required, um, which might mean that Monday she has the opportunity to start seizing his properties in New York and auctioning them off. So, uh, oops. Any other big news, Monkey? Mm, I don't know. I'm sure you guys will bring it up if I don't have it. So... It's daytime. We're going to... Where are you? There. Classic. We're going to turn it off. There we go. <clears throat> cool. Uh, to the chat. Zoom, I got it with them. <laughs> Just it worth Oh my God, dude, with nub. Uh, Bobby Short's lyrics. Indeed. Can they read? Canada sheds jobs in March. Unemployment rate rises 6.1%. This is what happens when you put all your eggs in one basket. Real estate, more pain to come. Mm-hmm. Who's messaging me? Sorry. Getting messages. Is it something to answer now? Nope. Don't worry about that. Okay. 
Chris Taylor made number three. Chris Taylor says, also, happy Friday. Happy Friday, indeed. Wheat Wild's number four. Oops, number five. No, I think you're number four. One, two, three. Yeah, number four. Yeah. Scott Pollan. I don't know about y'all, but as I've been traveling this summer, there's definitely a homelessness epidemic nationwide. Mm-hmm. My, my second or third show ever was basically how to solve homelessness, and it is by murdering the uh, private health care system. Uh, private health care needs to go. It serves no benefit to society. It makes things super expensive. And then we have the inability to treat people who obviously need it. 55% of the homeless have psychosis. 55%. And then the majority of the remainders have deep-seated trauma, PTSD, addiction problems. Uh, and all those things are medical issues and need to be treated medically. But if you don't have a job, you don't have insurance. And if you don't have a home, you can't, you have no mailing address for Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, whatever. And you, you're stuck. Whereas if we just guaranteed health care to every citizen in this country, like most modern industrialized nations, not only A, would it become significantly cheaper for all of you to exist, but B, would get everyone off the streets and into facilities where they can get the treatment they need. But we make it so damn expensive and impossible to do that... What are we left with? We're left with streets teeming with homeless people who need help. And yeah, we've got a huge, huge homeless epidemic. And this dates back to, to the 1960s. Uh, prior to that, we had about half a million Americans. The popula population in the U.S. about half of what it is now. We had half a million Americans permanently institutionalized. Now, yes, the, 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 the mental asylum, sanitarium... Uh, system needed definite overhauls. No doubt about that. Uh, we, we would take people that, that were autistic and throw them into asylums when, you know, that's not the place for them, right? Uh, we need to definitely overhaul that. But, but when someone is schizophrenic, they got full-blown psychosis, dementia, you know, they've completely disassociated, the place for them is not on the street. That makes them unsafe, it makes us unsafe, and that's not the solution. The solution is a nice, warm bed, food, psychological treatment, access to medications, etc. And then a lot of people, when they, when they get medicated, they're a functional member of society again. They're like, oh shit, that was a weird episode, sorry about that. And they're totally functional again. If they go off their meds, well, back in the institution until you get medicated, and then you can be trusted to be on your own. Um, and we just don't have that system. And the system we do have is so freakishly expensive because of the private insurance and privately operated hospitals that it's it's just insane. Like Switzerland has a very, very, very expensive uh, healthcare system. They have insurance. The insurance companies are all nonprofit. And it costs them about $6,000 per citizen per year uh, uh, to provide health care, which is like almost probably a third more expensive than any other nation in Europe. The United States is $12,000 a year, $12,000 a year to provide uh, health care per, per, per person in the United States. The UK has the NHS system, which... NHS has its own problems. That's largely because the Tories are trying to destroy it to develop a private insurance system like the U.S. and just ruin the U.K. because that's their entire job. Uh, but it does its job at about three and a half to four thousand dollars per citizen per year, which is a third of what we spend in the United States. If the United States just basically nationalized every hospital and put all people insurance companies into a cannon and fire them into the sun, uh, we would instantly save $2.2 trillion a year in the United States. $2.2 trillion. That's about $15,000 per worker. So just imagine, imagine you know, Microsoft, Amazon, General Motors, General Electric, you know, whatever, any company you name of, suddenly saving $15,000 per employee because insurance is just covered, right? Well, that means employees could have more take home. Uh, uh, more cash can go to investors via dividends, right? Like 
there's a lot more money to play with nationally for investing back in the people. Uh, another thing, if 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 we adopted like a national healthcare system like the UK, right? And we're paying four thousand dollars per citizen per year to do it. It's coming out of our payroll taxes, etc. The amount of money that currently comes out of our taxes for Medicare and Medicaid would cover the entire thing, meaning your taxes won't go up and your health care costs basically eliminate just gone. So you're saving piles of money and you now have a system in place to get people on the streets into into institutions where they can be they can face their treatment. And we can finally have nice, walkable, livable lovely urban areas in this country where we aren't having to like step around drug addicts and and people with psychosis and their tents and having cops you know uh, is it uh, I, I ran the numbers a couple years ago when i when i did that show and it, i did the numbers for seattle and 200 million of the 400 million dollar police budget in seattle is devoted to dealing with homelessness 200 million of 400 million dollars I spent. Another 200 million dollars of the city budget goes towards dealing with homelessness. So that's 400 million dollars. And then on the, on on the private side through charity, another 900 million dollars goes each year into charities to deal with the homelessness, like Union Gospel Mission and Salvation Army, etc. So we get 1.3 billion dollars a year. It in that's in 2021. And it came out to $108,000 per homeless person was how much we were spending as 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 a as a, a, a metropolitan area on the homelessness problem here. $108,000. You can just cut a check for $108,000 and give it to the homeless. And that would do more than what all this charity work and governmental work has done without having any access to, to health care whatsoever. And we have such a dumb system and we spend so much more than we should to accomplish nothing. Like, let's just look at what other nations did, right? And what works, and we'll just do that. How hard, how is that so hard? Be like, oh, that country solved that problem. And they did it exactly this way. So if we just, you know, right click, copy, paste, ta-da! It's so freaking frustrating. <sighs> anyway, yeah, we do have a homelessness problem, big time. Andrew Stewart. Houston, can you give an idea of what you pack when you take the war wagon out? Is there anything you used to bring that you found you don't use uh, things you should have brought? Um, I mean, first and foremost is what I call my box of knowledge. So you can see uh, over my shoulder, all those maps right there. Those suckers go into the box of knowledge. They're, they're recreation maps for each individual, individual state. Um, they're easier to look at than trying to like scroll on a tiny little screen, uh, looking for locations and you can map out your routes and, and do things like that. And then, and then refer to your GPS later for getting to those spots. They're fantastic. Um, and I also usually take, I've got here next to me is, is, is my, uh, all my geology books. Those go in there as well. Ghost town books. Um, a way to cook food, so stove, gas, uh, spare fuel tanks for the truck, toolkit for sure, um, includes all sockets you need. Uh, that's the basics, and then you want you know if, if you're if you're ground camping, cool. I in the truck old truck I had set up so I had a, a basically a twin bed in there, so I'd sleep on that. So you know, pad, pillows, whatnot. Um, I always have regular shoes for walking around, hiking boots for doing badass stuff, flip-flops because it's usually summer, and also have aquatic shoes. I have uh, neoprene booties that I bring along because I'm in the rivers a lot, and it's much easier to walk around with neoprene booties and you don't, like, scuff your toenails and, and crap. Uh, do, 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 do. All the tools I need, shovels, pickaxes, gold pans, uh, gold screens, sluices. If I'm bringing the dredge or anything like that, that goes in there. Metal detectors. Um, and then, you know, I generally, like, I don't usually stay in locations for super long time. Like, because I'm out prospecting, right? So I, I go out 
I look for my stuff. It might be a day or two if I got to like use the dredge and get through overburden to get to where I think things are. But uh, so I usually don't bring too much in the way of food with me. Probably like three days worth of food because I'll just hit up a store again when I'm on my way out. Uh, lots of water though. Lots and lots and lots of water because you can last a long time on water even without food. And if anything, I got a monkey butt, just go kill me a bunny. So, um, yeah, so like three days worth of food, but a shit ton. Like we're talking like 10 gallons of water. I have a water tank in the war rig that holds 13.3 gallons and I can, I can fill it up from a river and it'll do all the purifications as a, uh, 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 ultraviolet light in the tank that flashes it plus filters to get on any particulates out. Um, anything else important that I bring with me? Dog food. That's important. Dog food. Yeah, that's, that's probably the big stuff. Uh, GPS I've on my phone and a separate GPS unit. Um, yeah, that's probably the big things. I, I like when I'm going on trips with friends and I bring the camping trailer and stuff, then I'll haul, I'll bring like so much firewood along, uh, because we'll be, you know, making campfires and stuff at night. And, uh, then I've got their cots and tents and all sorts of things. Cause it was just groups of people and then a lot more food. So I've got like the giant igloo coolers, uh, that now hold like enough food for, enough of us for like a week or more. Cause that, but cause if we're, cause if I got a group, we're probably like doing a specific diamond dig at one of my claims and we'll be there for weeks. Uh, you know, every couple of days heading into town until I can get like a burger at the pot belly or whatever. Yeah. Um, Tom Zerlotka. What is RC waiting on three years? People losing faith about any price recovery, not one peep, about any future plans, no debt, no crypto coins. Let's end this already. I do think that that there's a large feeling, especially after this earnings, there's a large feeling that, hey, you got the company profitable. Fantastic. Now what? Show us the big plan and make it snappy, right? I mean, we're twiddling. We're twiddling. We're doing our part. We put our money in it. We're doing our twiddling. Now achieve something, anything, Just achieve it. We want, we want a big giant sign that, that, you know, there's some, there's some respite on the horizon. So let's just, let's just do this already. Come on, do it. I know that, that, our timeline is impatience and they can see exactly what all the little moves are on the chessboard. And we have no idea, but like throw a bone, man. I get it. I get it. Uh, we wild. I can't anymore. I can deal with the fact that the shorts are unbearable. What I can't deal with is Jimmy doing fuck all to ruin them and make us their great and loyal apes rich. Uh, Again, like I, he's he's got he's got to have a move. <laughs> it's been three years. Make the move. Let's do it. Let's let's get it already. Just make that move. And I think that's kind of where a lot of people are. Like, do it already. Snare alerts here. Um, Scott Pollan, in my opinion, the economy is in the gutter and we're watching a slow moving freight train crash. Uh, the stock market is so incredibly overvalued. It is absolutely mind boggling. Uh, according to the Buffett index, we're looking at probably a 50% correction. They're saying between 45 and 65% correction. So that's, that's a huge, huge correction. Uh, if you don't know what the Buffett index is, it's a simple index. You look at the GDP. So the US GDP is like uh, 28 trillion. And then you look at the total value of the US stock market. And right now the US stock market value is at like 52 trillion. And what it should be is a one-to-one. -one. So it's a healthy economy when it's one-to-one. -one. If the market's worth a little bit below what the US economy is, 
that is the best time to buy a boatload of stocks. Right now, it's at almost 100% above. So we're almost 200% of, of the U.S. economy. And, and according to Buffett, that is completely unsustainable. We were The Buffett Index was way out of whack in 2008. It was way out of whack in 2001. It was way out of whack in 1991. So every time we have ourselves a huge correction, it's, it's because the market is completely overvalued. And right now, it's completely overvalued because... The Federal Reserve and the government are going out of their way to shore up stocks. Combined with the fact that we've got runaway corporate buybacks happening on stocks. And a lot of those corporate buybacks are being done via debt. Companies that can't afford to do their buybacks are spending tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars buying back their own shares to reduce supply and boost the price. So, so it looks like the stock isn't failing at all, but really they're spending money that should be spent on, on, on diversifying their portfolio, on research and development, on updating stores and products are being spent instead on uh, pumping their share price, which isn't sustainable for anybody at all. <clears throat> Not off, happy birthday. If you were a hedge fund in all of these plays, how would you get out of it? Or do you book it? to non tradition country. I don't know if you can get out of it. If you are gonna get out of it, you get out of it first. Whoever whoever finally just goes, that's it, I'm out, uh, and, and, and close all the positions first will do better than those that are forced to do it later. Um, the ones who are forced to do it, it's too late for them. Now, we talked about it before, I think a lot of the cash that's made from short selling, that cash goes to bank accounts that are offshore. And I think those bank accounts offshore are, are loosely connected to the market maker or hedge fund. So they can be like, look at all of our assets and cash we have on hand. And then the banks or their prime brokers go, okay, looks like you have it. But the minute trouble happens, they will cut that tether between the Cayman bank and their hedge fund. And then suddenly, you know, Goldman Sachs will have no access to the bank in the Caymans to get the cash back that they need to close out these positions. And hedge fund guy will be like, oh, shit, sorry. That's it. He'll still has access to all his money in the Caymans. And that's that. So the prime brokers, I think, really have to pay attention to exactly um, how much bad acting and offshoring of cash is happening. Uh, just to make sure that you know, they have access to it. <laughs> like, like if, if I if I were J.P. Morgan, if I were Nomura, if I were UBS or Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, I would go look look at those who are trading on margin underneath me. Look at where all their accounts are that they that they have uh, attached to them, and then require them to put that money back in U.S. accounts and be like, you cannot. We will not give you any more margin. You will not give any more faith from us until that money is back in the United States. Only then can you have access to further margin. Because um, I, I have no, I have no doubt in my mind that they that they will be like, well, it's overseas and you can't get it anymore. Ha ha ha! Good luck with that, you know, court order. So, yeah. Sadboy Corporate Houston, check out my post on the sub. Because community could easily squeeze short sellers like this and then take GME and No Labs private. I will have to go look at that. But yes, I think I think a lot of especially the smaller caps like No Labs, um, and 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 Meta and stuff like that, they they could they could be taken private quite easily, especially with a white whale. I mean, honeypot baby, someone's got a honeypot at some point. Just do it already. If you want to use those offshore accounts to your benefit, buy a kajillion shares offshore, don't report anything, and then take it over. Um, we while don't really get it, more than three years now, how long do they think they'll keep us with no news, no updates, no instruments, no investments, no crypto, no dividend? On top of it all, uh, that sliding on profits on what was supposed to be their big quarter, for fuck's sake, for fuck's sake do something. It, it was rumored that uh, someone leaked GameStop's earnings t 
to to Wall Street ahead of the earnings, and that's why they adjusted to make the earnings pump up so they would miss the earnings report. The, the good news is they're profitable, right? They went from losing hundreds of millions of dollars a year to being profitable. Boom, done, fixed, cured. What's amazing to me is that a stock, when it was losing $311 million a year, is worth $27 a share, but now when it's making $7 million a year, is worth $11 a share. That crap doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if you're a profitable company and you are not at least a one-to-one revenue to market cap, there's shenanigans. That's straight up, like, that should send alarm bells to the SEC going, this is messed up. That shouldn't be happening, right? I mean, if, like, what? how much, how much sales? Okay, let me, let me, oh, we're good. We're good. one sec. One sec, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, shaboink. Come on. <laughs> okay. Boom. Uh, calculator. Okay, we got the calculator up. Alrighty, so uh, take a company like Microsoft. One sec. Uh, Microsoft 2023 revenue. So Microsoft made 211 billion dollars in 2023 profit. Seventy-two billion, so a huge, huge profit. So seventy-two billion to two hundred and eleven billion—that's appreciable percentage. That's 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 like a thirty percent profit, which is absolutely insane. But their market cap, market cap is three point one six trillion. So uh, let's do seventy-four billion uh, divided by three one six zero zero. So that's three. That'd be three trillion. So their market cap, so their 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 profit is two percent of their market cap, right? And their oops, their revenue is sixty six or six percent of their market cap, right? So their their revenue is six percent of their market cap, meaning they're about fifteen x, sixteen x. Uh, is there is there value versus their revenue and about 50x for their profit now was market cap uh, gamestop market cap gamestop market cap is 3.44 billion and gamestop revenue 2023 revenue uh was 5.7 billion 5.27 billion okay so 5 uh point two seven divided by what was it 2.4 i forgot oops 3.44 So currently, they're they making revenue one hundred and fifty three percent of their total market cap, meaning they're worth way less than what the revenue is each year. And I'm sure profit wise, it's a lot smaller than that. So we'd be doing, uh, was it like seven point five million divided by three one six zero? No, three four four. I got my numbers mixed up. So there, yeah, two percent. So, like, these big blue chips that 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 make profit, when they make profit, their value is dozens of times greater than the revenue they generate every year and the profit they generate every year. When a medium cap or small cap makes profit, they're still worth way less 
than the revenue they generate every year. This was the big problem that GameStop had in, in April 2020, right? You could have bought the entire company for $200 million, and they were generating close to $6 billion a year in revenue. It doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. Why, why do we allow that to happen? <laughs> like the only, the only way GameStop is at $11.25 is pure market manipulation. There is no fundamental that says this company is worth only $11. It's not fundamentals at all. It is 100% market manipulation. And there needs to be, like if you're going to use AI for anything, you use an AI to identify where the manipulation is happening and what type of trades happen on manipulated stocks. And those should raise red flags at the SEC and FINRA. Be like, whoa, you guys need to back off and, and, and stop naked shorting all this crap. But here we are, twiddling. You and I are powerless. The best we can do is like what we did with, with uh, MMTLP is we just don't stop yelling at those in power until they go, fine, we'll do something. But, you know, make their life a living hell. Just call them constantly, email them constantly, show up at their offices, talk to their staff, talk to them, you know, call them some more, send them letters, send them emails, to be as annoying as possible until the point where they do the math in their head to like, okay, I get this much money from the hedge funds every year for my campaign, but I spend this much time dealing with these really annoying retail investors. Like there at some point, one is not worth it. Right? So keep being annoying, do the MMTLP thing and bug the shit out of these people. Because change won't happen until they're so sick of dealing with us that they go, fine, we'll just fix it. And they'll be like, I don't need the $25,000 from Goldman Sachs. It's not worth it. Because these people won't stop calling and bugging the hell out of me. So please, be annoying. That's our greatest strength. We can twiddle thumbs and be annoying. I make a t-shirt that says, I twiddle thumbs and I'm annoying. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Uh, Alex Bishop is here. Mr. Oak, Houston, with the coming solar eclipse, if you are directly in the center path of when it is overhead, could you technically look at it without special glasses? Yes. Yeah, total eclipse, as long as there's a little bit of sun showing, put these suckers on, right? There's just even the teeniest, tiniest amount of sun happens to be showing uh, uh, behind the moon. Have these suckers on. The minute that part is gone, you have, what, four minutes? You can look. At, directly at the disc with the naked eye. The moment you see the diamond ring appear, which is the moon moves just enough to like let this little teeny tiny bit of sun uh, show, put the glasses back on. Cause that little teeny tiny corner of the sun that comes out is like a laser beam. It is all polarized light and it will burn a hole in your retina permanently. And you'll have a permanent sun dot in your vision. And you have a blind spot directly ahead. So for those four minutes, you can take the glasses off, look at the disc. The, m the very moment a piece of the sun appears again, put your glasses on and do not take them off if you're going to continue looking at it. Just don't. Your vision will be ruined forever. Well, I'm not mincing words there. When I say it burns a hole in your retina, it burns a hole in your retina and forever when you look at people straight on, there'll be a blind spot you cannot see. So do not mess with it. Don't be like Trump where he was like squinting, looking at, looking at the sun in 2017. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> especially, especially when the diamond ring forms, because that is all polarized light. It is essentially planar waves. It is a laser beam into your eyeball. Like you're not going to look at a class two laser and come away without damage vision. That is exactly what the sun is doing in that moment. So yes. During totality, for those four minutes, you can look at it without your glasses. But the minute totality is over, put them back on. All right? All right, Fatso? Yeah? How about you? Do you agree? Okay. We're all in agreement here. <clears throat> Andrew Stewart, Houston. Anytime you have fried chicken, save the bones, make make a uh, chicken stock for ramen, and bone meal for plants or, or dog or cat food. That, I mean, that's doable. If I did stuff like that, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Scott Ballin has a great post on Super Stonk talking about the surefire way to beat shorts. Shop at GameStop. Uh, Wee Wild says, Scott, I can hold on for seven years, but come on, say something. Say something. Jimmy hasn't s- said a single meaningful thing in years. Do they expect us to live off photosynthesis and happy thoughts? And Scott Pollen says, Wee Wild, I get your frustration, but let's be real. He's trimming the fat on what was an overweight company, and that means cutting stores, reducing waste, and the quarterly balance sheets show money. I don't care uh, what they say. I want to see it on the balance sheets. I want to see his profit. This is true. If you need consoling or words of affirmation, the stock market is not where you should be investing. Uh, print out the most recent 10K showing our first year of your profits in 2018, and then put it under your pillow so you can sleep better. <clears throat> true. They're making a profit, and that is fantastic. That's step one. Step two is do something huge. Like, I'm I'm in this for the squeeze. That is entirely why I'm, I'm in this for a squeeze. That's my year over year slow growth stuff that goes into my Vanguard account. I don't pay attention to it all. Just it does its things. I don't pay attention. I don't care what they do. That is, I'm expecting slow growth, you know, four to eight percent per year. Blah, 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 blah. Set it and forget it. My active retail investing account is the stuff I want something cool to happen and I want it now. Step one profit. Step two something gigantic and squirrely and i'm hoping i'm hoping the uh, so close yet so far bobby short is you know a little wink and a nod to the fact that bbby is still in play with this whole jimmy ryan cohen thing so i got my I got my fingers crossed my thumbs twiddling Martin Coyle, will RC do a share buyback? Or what do you think? Maybe, but I don't know. I I, th- I think a smarter thing for them to do is is if if they're going to use that 1.2 billion and invest in uh, uh, dividend stocks or something, something that that gives a decent payout of 10 percent or more a year, and then they can get themselves enough money to do either dividends or stock buybacks later off of the, off the proceeds of that. Uh, um, Jersey says they met news. Mm, they did their earnings on Wednesday. It was very boring and did not seem like, and they're trimming lots of fat there, but they, and they have, you know, they doubled their sales. Um, but they didn't really give any hints as to like how they're going to grow. Right. I mean, they, they need, they need to sell products and you can have all the patents in the world, but if you're not licensing that or getting royalties or selling the selling things to people, then what are you doing? Right. Kids Chapman, what up, Houston? Kendrick Lamar or J. Cole? Mm, Kid Cootie? <laughs> uh, I like Kendrick. Probably Kendrick. Yeah. Scott Pollen? Because let's be honest. You're, oh, no, it's not that. Uh, Big Moly 12. Houston? Do you think it's possible that the 16B lawsuit is already wrapped up or can be thrown at any time and they're just waiting till everything is ready to throw it out? No, I, th- I think the judge, the judge is a completely different judge and they're on their own prerogative. A judge will come out with a ruling when they come out with a ruling and uh, it's on the, it's at the judge's discretion on his time scale. So we can, we can be as impatient as we want, but nothing will happen until that judge finally releases a ruling of some kind. Uh, I would have thought a year ago they would dismiss this case based on the grounds that they have no standing because Ryan Cohen was not an insider when he bought. But, you know, we have no power over that. Judges are so slow. My own case. I figured my own case would have a, ru- would have a ruling from the appellate court by now. And here I am six months later. It'll be six months next week. And Nothing. No rulings whatsoever. So, who knows when when it will come out. <clears throat> um, 
Kirk Wilson Houston, in your opinion, what's the most fascinating discovery about the universe? Mm, recent discovery or discovery like since we've been looking at space? Recent discovery, I think, was being able to tune the gravitational uh, detectors, the way the gravitational wave detectors um, at Hanford and in Louisiana. Uh, those things are absolutely incredible piece of technology, and we're, we were able to see things like like black holes collide as a result. So that stuff is really cool. Um, that and probably supermassive black holes in general in the centers of like big elliptical galaxies. We're talking black holes that are like trillions of solar masses, which is just crazy. Like our, our galaxy, the Milky Way is like 150 billion solar masses. So there's a sing there are single black holes in galaxies we've observed. They're like 10 times the size of our entire galaxy. All right. Are you, do you, are you comfy? You knocked your blanket off and then you flip this thing over. So I don't know. What you're trying to accomplish there, buddy? It was a whole process. Do you want? Do I? Do I your blanket? Where's your blanket? There it is. That and the discovery that dogs like blankets. <sighs> I can imagine dogs out in the wild not having blankets. They would, they die. They wouldn't be able to survive. But here we have ourselves a covered mutt. Low B, doing some lurker hunting. Uh, Jealous money nine five zero one logic dustbin Iggy. Uh, Fred Jones, Hazel A., Joseph Lee, Timothy Sudik, Antonio Baez, Tyler Luke, and Avocados. Got a few of them. Got uh, one, um, two, three, four, five, five. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice lurker fishing there. Okay. Where was I? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, Kelly Reed, happy birthday, HW. No labs to present clinical research at the 2024 American Psychology Summit. Uh, sounds like great news. Have you also heard from Ron about their partnership we're all concerned about? I have not heard from Ron. I should message him again. I know he's definitely back by now. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out again. <clears throat> oh, shoot. I lost my spot again. Where are we? We were right there. Okay. Brandon Wells is here. Um, we wild Houston. What are some facts about light speed that people are unaware of and will blow your mind? Saw a video on this video on this this week. It's weird. Like you're talking about light traveling the speed of light, or you're talking about the potentiality of getting close to the speed of light as 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 a traveler through space. Um, regardless, weird things happen. Uh, time dilation itself is really, 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 really weird. Um, the fastest we've ever traveled as, as humans is when we leave, uh, Earth's orbit. So head towards the moon, going towards the moon, I think at like 20 something thousand miles an hour, uh, which is about 30, about 30,000 kilometers an hour. Um, We've proven from Russians looping around the Earth in their space station, right, that that uh, clocks move slower than they do on Earth. So atomic clocks up in, in orbit around the Earth and atomic clocks on the Earth's surface st start to get out of sync. Um, that stuff's cool. Uh, if you were to travel, if you were, if you were to travel at the speed of light, you would become pure energy. So that's weird. Uh, you just become a photon yourself. Um, and like, we're used to, we're used to kind of linear acceleration you know, up to a point, like here on the earth's surface, you're in a car, you floor it, you go faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And there's a point you just can't accelerate anymore because you're facing wind resistance and the output of the motor you're in. And you just, there's no more, there's no more acceleration available in the vacuum of space. You can do essentially constant acceleration more or less until you get to relativistic speeds. When you get to an appreciable percentage of the speed of light, you need an insane amount of thrust to actually push to the next level. Um, so that's because, you know, as you're becoming pure energy, as you hit the speed of light, uh, you need a whole bunch of energy to get you there in the first place. So those things are weird. 
Uh, essentially, with the time dilation, you can sort of figuratively travel through time, right? You go to a faraway system and come back, and it might take 50 years at the speed of light to get to that system and then come back. And for you, it will feel like maybe a year or two, but everyone on Earth will have aged 50 years. So friends and family will be dead, and, and you won't recognize places, and you'll be like, I've only been gone like a year. What the hell? And everything will be completely unrecognizable. So yeah, there's there's lots of weird things that that happen with, with, with the potentiality for light travel. Keith Dixon, happy birthday, Houston. Uh, we've heard you talking about your goal of accumulating 1,000 shares of GME despite recent setbacks. Has the dip helped? How close are you these days? I'm like a hundred and thirty away from my thousand goal. I would have easily crossed the thousand goal if I'd been able to buy puts this time around. <sighs> but no, not there yet. We're close, very close. <laughs> Under over for microphone not working. The microphone's working fine, bro. All right. Tom Zock E. Oh, you know, I forgot, I forgot to print out a thing. I was going to have a new GoFundMe to replace uh, uh, Bam, the big ass Mexican, um, uh, uh, Beto. He's been in our chats a lot in the past. He broke both his legs and uh, did not get his workers' comp, um, which is awful. He's got little kids to raise. So I put a, I put a link in, the, in our, our um, subreddit. Uh, for him, he's trying to raise just a couple of grand to to make it through. He's got he had one surgery to put a bunch of hardware in one of his ankles, and and now he's got another one that um, he's got next week. The brakes are pretty bad. Where is where is it? Uh, how did I lose my spot already? Come on. You really? How on earth did I lose my GoFundMe? Where? Oh, here we go. All right. So I wanted to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put a thing up for him on the board here. But, oops. I need you. That's what I need. Come on, click that. Click, click. There we go. Okay, so yeah, uh, Beto Cantu uh, broke both his ankles. He, he he put some pictures in the in the in the um, the sub, but I thought I would give this here. Uh, trying to get him, trying to get him up to up to speed. There, he's you know he's stuck with these leg halos. It's pretty gnarly, um, like pretty bad breaks, tibia and fibia. So. On both ankles. So uh, if you guys can throw him a bone, help him out, it'd be fantastic. He's out of work until legs heal, and it takes a long time for these suckers to heal. Uh, my friend Sarah broke those two bones uh, last spring, and it took her until September before she was allowed to put weight on it. So it was like six months. So it's it's a big deal. He's got little kids, and so yeah. So I put I put the link for the GoFundMe in the chat there. I'm gonna have a little sign up on the board. I forgot to put that up today. Sorry, Beto. Um, but yeah, if you can help him out, much appreciated. You know, shit happens. This is America, where well, we've got a shitty healthcare system. We spent the first ten minutes of the show talking about what a crappy healthcare system we have. Um, so yeah, uh, help a brother out. Okay, thank you. Just remind me of that. <clears throat> Uh, Tom Zaki, Houston, what do you think about the Israel-Iran conflict? Do you think Iran will attack Israel as this potential for a wide-range Middle East war? I don't think Iran will do anything except for proxy. They'll they will send stuff to Hezbollah. They'll send stuff to uh, Hamas. But you know, as far as other uh, Muslim nations, Saudi Arabia, the, the the biggest gorilla in the area, absolutely hates Iran. And weirdly, has sort of loosely become allies with Israel as a result. So, if if Iran were to do an attack on Israel, I think Saudi Arabia would use this opportunity to to uh, uh, attack Iran directly. I don't think Iran survives that. I don't think Iran survives attacking Israel. Israel's air force alone could could basically wipe out Iran. Um, 
So it's going to be through proxy. They're going to, they'll send stuff to Hezbollah. And at this point, Hezbollah, you know, beyond a few lobs here and there, I think they're actually scared to go into direct confrontation with Israel again, because every single time they've done that, they've gotten their ass kicked. Uh, yeah, I think it'll all be proxy. That's proxy, 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 proxy. That's how they do it. They don't want they don't want a direct war because they know they know they can't survive one. They'll ra rattle sabers and and that's it. Um, MT's here. Guts for the long term is here. Wilbur Dodge. Hello, Houston. Uh, it's been a minute. Hope all's well. It's going pretty well. Ludicrous speed. Will Evergrande follow ever re catch up with the banks? They're gonna have to write it off eventually. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they're gonna, they're they're gonna have to they're gonna have to write it off eventually. It's just uh, I don't know what they're waiting for. Like, just hand of God coming down and saving the day. It's not gonna happen. Dmitry Maximov, who knew the P and P that he stood for pedophile? <laughs> Dude. That guy, that guy is toast. I don't, who knows where he is? I doubt he's ever coming back, wherever he is. Bree W, do you think the quake is a coming symptom of the eclipse? Uh, quakes generally happen when you're at new moon or full moon, just because that's when the tidal forces are the strongest. Uh, so, so new moon is when the sun and, and the moon line up against the earth, and full moon is when the sun and moon on opposite opposite sides of the earth. And that's, that's when you have the that's when you have your king's tides, uh, your, your biggest tides. Um, so usually earthquakes happen at those points. Uh, uh, now last week's uh, earthquake in Taiwan was was at uh, half, so uh, or at I guess three quarters. One quarter. I was at one quarter. So it's a little, little off, like it's uh, off to the side here. So that's, that's pretty big quake not to have during full moon or new moon. But uh, yeah, so generally do, you do get more earthquakes during those times. So, you know, maybe we'll have something bigger when uh, the eclipse happens on Monday. Who knows? What does wig me out though, is that here we are. Since, two, since 2004, when the Indonesian tsunami happened, we've had a major quake on every single solitary subduction zone on the planet, except the Pacific Northwest, the Juan de Fuca subduction zone. It's it that that is something that just eats away at my brain, and why every subduction zone on Earth has had their their comeuppance except for us. We're going to get hit eventually, and it's going to be huge. It's been 324 years. I think, I think January 28th, 1700 was the last time we had one. Um, so subduction zones are where uh, a continental plate meets an oceanic plate. So like up here in the Aleutian Islands, you got the continent of North America meeting the Pacific plate. The hit, the, the, the oceanic plate is denser, so it dives underneath. And you get like a volcanic chain here. Um, and we've got the Juan de Fuca plate, which is this little spreading ridge here. It's a very small plate. It's it's, it's a, a remnant of a much older time. It basically goes from uh, the north end of Vancouver Island down to Northern California, like Mendocino, Northern California. And it can produce 9.0s and bigger. And the last time it did one was January 28th, 1700. And it caused a tsunami that wiped out villages all over Japan hours later. Tsunamis that wiped out the natives uh, along here. The, the, the land by the ocean dropped 30 feet, just bringing the ocean in for a huge tsunami. Uh, and we've not had a significant quake since then. And not only that, we've not had a minor quake anywhere along the subduction zone in like 15 years. This thing is as locked as it has ever been. So they're scared that when it does rip, it's going to not just be like one spot that slips, but it will go the entire like thousand miles, or I guess it's about 700 miles of this uh, whole subduction zone. And that quake is going to be absolutely bonkers, like five to 10 minutes long, 9.5 to 10 on the scale, uh, tsunamis wiping out 
every little piece of infrastructure for probably about 100 or so miles inland. Uh, it's it's going to be bad. But they have had major quakes along Lucians, major quakes along Kamchatka, major quakes along Japan, major quakes along Saipan and Guam, major quakes along uh, 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 Papua New Guinea, major quakes in the Philippines, major quakes in, in um, uh, Indonesia. Major quakes in uh, in uh, the South Pacific, major quakes in New Zealand, major quakes down in uh, 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 Central America, major quakes in, in South America, uh, major quakes out here on the edge of Antarctica, major quakes in the subduction zone off of um, the Caribbean, uh, major quakes in subduction zones here, major quakes. I mean, every, everywhere there's a subduction zone has had a major earthquake in the last 20 years, except this little subduction zone here uh yeah so more thumb twiddling to twiddle over <laughs> when it happens it's gonna be huge all right uh age american mon houston mon we'll catch you later have a good one there was a mention of mmtlp in the news show by the way what did did they did something did anything happen? <laughs> I mean, last I heard was their deal for uh, uh, prospects. They sold half, but they maintained a whole bunch of rights to uh, drilling and and rights below nineteen thousand feet. Um, outside of that, ever anything new? So if you hear anything new, send it to me. Uh, Juice Mammy, Florida Panthers goalie is Bob Bob Rovsky. Hence the chat for Bobby. So they call him Bobby. Word. Thank you. Wilbur Dodge. Question, sir. Have you been investing into GameStop? It's cheap with shares being back to the low of 38 per share in February 2024, 2021. Uh, I, I, I bought um, 100 and something in the last week. So, yeah, I have. Uh, I would have been able to buy more if I'd been able to get those stupid puts. But yes, I have bought up more. Um, JL2023, Houston. Do you know how to titillate an ocelot? You oscillate your tits a lot. <laughs> ah, okay, Jason Blackwell. Uh oh. Uh, making a Friday meme for your show was a lot easier before you kicked out the bigots, assholes, and Nazis. I, didn't, I mean, a lot of them I didn't kick out. A lot of them just they left on their own. Or maybe. Some of the mods kicked them out, but uh, we've we've distilled a group, a pretty good group down, I think. Um, I don't have as big an audience as I did before. It, I used to sometimes get upwards of a thousand of you watching live. Now I get like 300. But, you know, that's peace of mind. I don't need weirdo, super racist people being really awful in the chat. You know, yeah, I get a penny from each one of them every time they watch, but I'm happy not taking that penny from them or youtube because it makes my life easier that's like what i'm trying to say like when you just be really annoying with those uh uh elected officials they again they get a whole bunch of money from uh some hedge fund but then if you're super annoying they look at that money and they go no, that's not worth it i would love to have a large audience on youtube i'd love to have a kajillion of you showing up every week and i would be rolling in it. it'd be fantastic but if it's a whole bunch of assholes who make my life miserable, I look at that money and I go, eh, it's not worth it. So I'm I'm glad we're able to like distill down a good core group of rad people. And I'm happy about that. You guys are great. And and the, all the little letters I got when you guys are sending clips classes, they just warm my heart and thank you. It just <laughs> makes me burst out of my chest like an alien. Aaron Southing, Houston. Hello, from Cancun, Mexico, out on a resort in the playa, uh, Dick Carmen. Bought a ticket and booked the resort, spent 1600 bucks for four days here. Glad I did it last second. Needed some rest away from work and everything else. Well, fantastic. Uh, a, a, a viewer just sent me a, an article about they're doing, they're building a train in the Yucatan, I guess. Uh, so... Ba -ba -ba -bum -ba -bum. Yeah, Cancun. There we go. So uh, they're making some sort of loop train. So Cancun's up here in in um, the tip here, and making a train that's basically doing a loop around uh, the the Yucatan Peninsula. 
And a lot of the little Mayan towns and cities in here, uh, if you go visit the Mayan ruins, there might only be like 10 people there that day. And because it's a long trek, a lot of driving through dirt roads and and it's pretty remote, a lot of remote jungle. And they're now scared because they're looking to have this train finished in the next year that will bring millions of tourists to these sites that were once kind of intimate uh, adventures and, you know, bring tons of money, but also millions of people and, and lots of lots of feet trampling these ancient ruins. Um, it was a pretty, pretty fascinating article. Uh, one thing I didn't know was that Cancun was a planned city. That basically in the 1960s, the rudimentary computer program, the Mexican government was like, where's the best place to build a resort? And this computer program kept spitting out again and again and again, Cancun. And so it was a, uh, an entirely planned city built up in the 1960s because they like had an amazing beach and good location. And like, okay, well, let's build resorts there. Uh, but yeah, out here in the jungle, there's tons of ancient Mayan cities and, and lots of uh, ruins to check out and things yet to be discovered old uh, sinkholes and just lots of cool stuff. But they're now very worried that the, the train that's going to be doing a loop through this whole place uh, is going to bring so many tourists that it's going to kind of ruin the vibe. But, I mean, that's, you know, if, 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 you, if you went to Egypt in 1905, right, and you went to go see the pyramids, well, not a lot of people had the ability to hop onto a steamship work their way across the ocean for weeks or months, make their way to Cairo, make their way out into the desert with some local guide. And when you got there, you got to actually like climb on the rocks that make the pyramid and climb your way to the top and like get some old timey photo done. You know, you have to sit still for 20 minutes. Uh, today, you can't do that because so many millions of people can just hop onto a plane, you know, 1600 bucks, fly to Cancun for four days. You, you can You can hop on a plane and Go to Egypt tomorrow if you want to, right? For probably not much uh, more than that. And you can go see the pyramids. So, so many millions of people show up now. You can't just go climb on the pyramids. The liability, the, the damage that it would cause. Like, so, so the minute you make these really amazing spots more accessible, um, yeah, it can take away kind of the specialness of the place. He's, now, all of a sudden, you have, like, Instagram models showing their butts everywhere. Uh you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, money's money. I can see building the train, bring millions of people to places. The economy goes boom, boom, boom. Those people are happy. But then the aesthetic, you know, the, on the aesthetic side and the personal side, it's, uh, it's, it's just, it's just going to change things for sure. Um, yeah, it's, I have a friend right now that's, uh, been going through Italy with his, with his boyfriend and, but posting his like old man travel rants and they're pretty funny. He, like he posted one about uh TikTok dancers being in his way everywhere and like Instagram hoes. This he went to some he went to some ancient mall in uh uh what's it called? Uh uh Milan. But his ancient mall in Milan and um there's an old man there He's there every day. He's got his little chair. He's this dirty old man. And he waits for the Instagram models to come along and the little fong butts. And he volunteers to take their pictures for them. <laughs> That's what he does all day long. He's like, oh, here, let me help you. I'll take your picture for you. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. He takes like 50 pictures of them. And then they go through it and they take 50 more selfies. And then, <laughs> like, he just didn't have this stuff before. It's, uh... Welcome to the future. Where we just ruin all the lovely spots all over the place. Yeah, well, it is what it is. I haven't had a chance to make it out to any of these locations yet. So get there while you can. Head, head on head on the card there, uh, 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 and, and Aaron, and, and, and just go go out into the jungle, see some sites, see some ancient ruins, do a sacrifice or something. Uh, greedy investors, and how did you do on the Jimmy Weeklies on earnings? Not well. I was I could not hedge. Uh, Robin Hood sucks ass, and I should have learned my lesson the first time around. But despite the fact that my funds had cleared, like definitely I had proof that everything had cleared, um, they they wouldn't give me access to my money. I put that money in a week ahead of time. I pay five dollars a month to have instant deposits, right? So it shouldn't have mattered if it was if it was if if the settle if the cash is settled or not because I pay them money to act like it's settled, and I. 
bought a chunk of my calls, was able to buy all my calls, bought like a thousand dollars worth of the calls. And I was like, Hey, well, let me buy more. Call them up. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? Like, well, money is settled. Like it has settled. It's in my account. It's out of my other account. It was a week ago and it shouldn't matter because I pay for instant settlement. It's like, Whoa, it's, 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 it's not working. It's not going to work. So I was not able to buy my puts. If I'd been able to buy my puts, I would have made 9,600 bucks, which is a good chunk of change for Houston. And I would have easily gotten my, over my, my threshold of a thousand GME shares, but yeah, thwarted, absolutely thwarted. Ludwig Vladimir Dorner, drug industry prospers from this bad healthcare system as well. They do. I mean, the collective buying power of Canada results in way cheaper uh, prescription drugs than here in the United States, where we're all individuals trying to buy our medication. You just, can't Canadian government says, well, you can't sell it here unless you sell it for this much. And the drug companies go, okay. So, you know, your, your, your medications are a fraction of the price. Like med medications that can cost $1,000 a dose here are like $15 in Canada. There's, there's a reason why you see those like busloads of seniors go to Canada or go to Mexico to go buy, go buy their, their pills because it's so much cheaper to go to, go to those places. Like, why don't we have, why don't we flex our muscle and do that? <laughs> like, we could easily be like, you know what? We're going to do, go to a collective buying system for our drugs. And if you don't agree to sell it for this price, Pfizer, uh, you don't get to do business here anymore. Pfizer would be like, all right, and instantly cave because if they don't have the U.S. market for a whole bunch of unhealthy Americans, they have no market whatsoever. So, <sighs> anyway, uh, corporate walnut. Do you think the uh, Corey count is a legitimate? Uh, I take it with a large grain of salt. I take it with a large grain of salt too. I look at it and go, hmm, interesting. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to treat it as much with as much, uh, I don't know, zest, panache, authority. I'm not sure which word I'm looking for there as I would the actual Ryan Cohen account. Not I'm off. Happy birthday. I'm turning. I managed to save up two months of vacation time, but not used to traveling alone. Any suggestions on how to spend my paid time off? Traveling alone's awesome. <laughs> I mean, what, once once you do it for a little bit, then all of a sudden it doesn't matter anymore. Like, I remember the first time I went to a movie alone. I used to always go to the movies with friends. Like, oh, let's, let's go to the movies. And then if they were like, no, I can't tonight, I wouldn't go to the movies. But when I got to college and I was actually in a town that had a dollar theater and I didn't want to do homework, I would go to the dollar theater by myself all the time. On Tuesdays, Tuesdays it was 50 cents. So I would, I was constantly going to the dollar theater, uh, like several nights a week. Cause like you can see five movies for $5. Why not? It's better than doing homework. Right. And all of a sudden I got used to it. I was like, that's no big deal. I'm just sitting watching a movie. Like I would at home watching TV by myself. Uh, and after that traveling alone, just, I don't know, like it like broke the circuit in my brain and allowed me to like go see places. And I'm, you know, I, I, I am, uh, an extroverted American. So I will strike up a conversation with anybody and meet friends and hang out and do things. Uh, I'll go, I'll go to big, you know, go to a city and like, where's a good place to eat <laughs> and I go to that place. And I like to sit down at the bar. If I'm at the place and if people sit at the bar, they'll strike up a conversation with you and you can get talk with them. And then all of a sudden you're being invited to their house for dinner or, you know, they're like, Hey, do you want to go to this concert? And I'm like, sure. I'll go to the concert. Why not? It's, I don't know. I'm, I'm very extroverted. And, and as a dude, as a big dude, like I'm taller than everyone in most countries I go to, like no one's going to mess with me. So I don't really have that fear that say a single woman would have traveling alone. Um, my aunt is in the UK right now. She's retired. She's in her seventies. She, in her retirement, a couple times a year, she buys one of these like little vacation packages with a tour group might be like a river cruise or whatever. And this, what she's doing is three weeks in the UK. So she did uh, London and then went to Bath and up to Wales. And eventually they're going up to like Edinburgh and then working their way back down again. 
Um, but she's, you know, gets on the bus, they go to a hotel for a couple of days, the tour guide takes them to various, like, museums and chapels and, and cathedrals and things, and river walks, and then they, then they, you know, get on the bus and travel to the next town and do the same thing for the next couple of days. And so she meets a lot of people doing that way, but that's it's also an older crowd that does, those, that does those bus tours, because, you know, backpacking when you're in your 20s 30s and 40s is a lot different than when you're in your 70s trying to carry all your shit around across like the trains and stuff like that but she was telling me about um in 1977 i think it was so my my uncle bob uh my great uncle bob her uncle was an admiral in the navy and he got stationed in portugal as um a military attache to the portuguese government She's like, hey, I want to go check out Portugal. So she bought a plane ticket. I think she flew into Portugal and then flew out of like London or something. But she spent three months backpacking by herself, not knowing the language anywhere. She bought one of those Euro, Euro rail passes that allowed her for like the whole summer to take any train she wanted. And she just went places. And, you know, she went through, uh, uh, was still like the Franco fascist Spain and got stuck in, I think it was, Barcelona because there was protests by the Basques and you know she's just she's like I don't know what made me think I could do this but I just did it and like that's what you do you just go and do stuff um my method of traveling is literally I go to a city and just start walking <laughs> right? like, I just start walking until I hit something that smells good or looks cool and I'll do zigzags all over the city and and you know, just go out and eat everywhere, drink everywhere, uh, have desserts everywhere. If there's something that's like touristy in a museum, I just go in and check it out. Um, I don't know, just go, just go check. You're going to, you're going to meet cool people. Uh, my friend, Eric, uh, Eric and Kat, who I go visit in Switzerland. Uh, Eric was hiking the, one of the, the, uh, El Caminos in Spain, going across Spain, Northern Spain. And, you know, staying in youth hostels. He's hiking by himself, right? He's just staying in youth hostels and he's meeting people. And and he, there's this pretty blonde girl. They, he saw at a couple of stops. And then one day they happened to be walking together. And they struck up a conversation. And now they're married with a baby. So, <laughs> like, it's... It, another interesting thing, if you, if you go... Especially if you go travel alone, is you meet who my dad calls, like, the cool 1%. Like there's the 1%, there's the billionaires and millionaires, right? But there's also the 1% of the people that go out and do stuff. And when you go out and do stuff and you go see the world, you could be in the Philippines, you could be in Africa, you could be in Europe, you could be hiking Mount Fuji, and you're going to meet someone, right? You're going to meet someone who knows someone else you know elsewhere in the world, and it's going to be really weird. Because the people who go out and do stuff, they're a very, very small community. Everyone else, they go to Disneyland and they come home. They go on a cruise and they come home. That's the bulk of travel for most people. But the ones who go out and like travel alone and hike things and do stuff, they're a very, very cool, tight knit community, and they're and and they're like minded. So you you meet these people and you're instantly like, this is the coolest person I've ever met in my entire life because they do cool shit, <laughs> right? Like. I can tell you how many times I've been somewhere. I've been in, you know, a weird place in Canada, a weird place in Europe. And I meet someone like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from the cellar. We're in the cellar. cellar. Beer and I'm like, oh, do you know so-and-so? I'm like, I do know so-and-so. I grew up with them. I'm like, oh, well, I met them last year when I was bicycling across Australia. Like, like holy crap. <laughs> it's, it is, it's wild. It's really wild. And so I, I, I say, do it. Get out of your comfort zone. Go. And just start walking and meeting people. You 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 end up doing cool shit. And uh, I highly recommend it. If any any of you, any not just you and on off, but like anyone in the chat. If you're scared to travel alone, just go do it. Like you know, if 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 you're if you're a woman and you're scared to travel alone, go to safe countries, <laughs> right? Like get get your feet wet. Go 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 to nations that that don't have you know lots of crime and violence like you don't want, you don't want to go to like you know uh guatemala city or something by yourself as a four foot eleven woman just you know go 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 to paris go to go go to berlin like go go somewhere that japan go somewhere that you're going to be safe 
and and get your feet wet and like learn how to be by yourself. A lot of people don't know how to do that. Um, learn how to like read a subway map, learn how to read a map in general, uh, get lost, get mugged, you know, get ripped off by, by someone at a restaurant. Like you, these are all experiences. And once you get kind of savvy to how the world operates, you know, then you're like, you just roll the punches. And I think that's a good lesson for people to learn. Like it shit happens. And you know what? It always makes a good story to tell later. So do it. Get out there. Use your two months. Go somewhere cool. See the sights. Do the train in Yucatan when it comes along. Get out there. Get out there. Okay. Kelly Reed, Dave McKay says, a failure to lower housing costs could put Canada's entire economy at risk. People can't support the economy if 110% of their income goes to housing costs. Exactly. Uh, the dissociation between between a roof over your head and what you earn is not sustainable. There's certain things human beings need. And one of them is a warm place to live, warm, dry place to, to live, uh, clothes, food, water, like those four things in healthcare I put out here. Uh, if you don't have access to those things, then the economy is completely lopsided and it will fail. And that's where a lot of, of economies are going to fail is in the real estate market again. We didn't learn our lessons the last time around and we're just going to repeat the same crap over and over and over and over and over and over. So yeah. Tatalus Houston. Happy birthday. I'm actually losing not only trust, but understanding and benefits of investing, at least in these conditions and rules. Uh I mean, yeah, uh, activist retail investing is a different animal than just like throwing stuff at an index fund and letting it grow year over year. Uh, when we're retail investing, we're expecting pops, bangs, bing bongs, booms, right? And the volatility has disappeared. We're not seeing the huge like 200% increases in a matter of days with they'll come crashing down again. So what? What do we do then? Right? They've, the, the one thing they've managed to do is mellow out the, the, uh, the volatility. And that has really put a damper on our uh, ability to kind of stick with this. Like it's not, it's not as interesting anymore. It's gotten kind of boring. So at least we had exciting stuff happening every day and things to talk about. And right now it's just kind of like boring. What, what's happening? What, I don't know. We're definitely a thumb twiddling stage. I personally was much more entertained when we'd see like a hundred dollar gain after hours on a Wednesday. Be like, whoa, what's going on there? Right. Uh, but that's gone now. Por qué? But why? My feeling is that DRS has kind of bit us in the butt. That while they're not supposed to, Naked short sellers are using all those DRS shares as identifiers of available shares, and then they're naked shorting anyway. That's my guess. They aren't supposed to be doing that, but I think it's exactly what they're doing. Um, so, because again, you can just like smash the keyboard and hit send, and that seems to be good enough for Finner and everyone else when they're identifying a naked short sale, according to Reg Show. But, yeah. Dan B. Hello. Andrew Dowell. Uh, homelessness in the UK, we spent $65 billion HS2, and that was scrapped. We have 309,000 people homeless, $65 billion. Uh, comes to 210,000 pounds each for each homeless person. Yeah, and your homeless pr problem is a fraction. Like, like the city of London, 10 million people, has fewer homeless people than the city of Seattle, 700,000 people. Uh, when I went to London a few years ago, I saw one homeless person. I walked 38 miles around the city. One, one homeless guy in the West End. That was it. And he was just kind of like an anomaly. I'm sure maybe we got the outskirts of like the main area. You might, maybe there's more. But also the home, the UK counts their homeless differently. So here in the United States, to be homeless, you have to be literally on the street. Sleeping in a tent, sleeping on a park bench, then you're homeless. If you're sleeping in a car, you're not homeless. If you're couch surfing, you're not homeless. 
But in the UK, if you're sleeping in a car, you're homeless. If you're couch surfing or, or, or staying for a night with somebody, you're homeless. But uh, so so the UK has a, has a much broader count of who counts as homeless than here in the United States, uh, which we are we narrow that definition to literally like, are you on the street right now? Then you're homeless. But if you if, if you spend the night in someone's on someone's couch or like sleeping in their pantry or something, you're no longer homeless. So we're going to take you off the homeless rolls. That's yeah. There's I mean, if you go to the if you go to the 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 what are the insecure like housing and in, home insecure housing insecure United States our homeless numbers jump to like ten million. It's crazy. But yeah, mm. dead. I always forgot. Is it dead bass or dead base? You told me once and I totally forgot which one it was. <laughs> Dead Bass Base. Uh, when Matt Furlong left, RC tweeted not for long. The same day, I believe, is when COO Nir Patel left, RC tweeted uh, so near and yet so far. Yes. Near and Furlong. It's very interesting. Because, like, not for long is also a song title from a guy named Bobby. Uh, was it not for long? What was the name of the song? Uh, not for long song uh yeah not for long is a song by american hip-hop recording artist b.o.b bob so interesting got the pun of the person who was let go of their position combined with a bob artist very interesting coincidence there bob not for long so near so far. Bobby Short. Hmm. Hmm. See? First thing you search. Oops, that's Google Earth. Bam. Search for Not For Long Song, you get Not For Long, Song by Bob. Search for uh, So Close and Yet So Far. Uh, oh, So Near and Yet So Far, that's right, So Near. So near and yet so far song. And well, I got well, there's Cole Porter. There's there. Bobby Short. There we go. Bobby Short there. So interesting. Interesting coinky dinks going on. <clears throat> Andrew Dell, I've been homeless. It sucked. I was I was homeless in Hawaii for a couple of months uh when my Student financial aid wasn't coming in. I was living in a van with a dude named Dave out in the jungle. I literally had to kill a chicken to eat because I didn't have any money for food. And if I ate nothing but fruit, I was just going to shit myself until I died. So, <clears throat> yeah, almost it sucks. At least in Hawaii, it was warm. It didn't rain a ton. But, like, it's it's not fun. And you end up quickly kind of, like, diving down a cycle that you don't want to be in. And for me, it was completely situational. I knew I was going to get out of it eventually. And, and it luckily, you know, finally got my financial aid money. I was able to like rent a house and be a normal student again. But a lot of people, they don't have that coming for them. <clears throat> so yeah, it's awful. Uh, C Gill bought another Jimmy call out to January tw uh, 25, uh, close to out the money. All right, there you go. <clears throat> uh, uh, Kevin Malone pointed out that someone bought a boatload of weeklies in thir at thirty dollars for next week, which is really hopeful. <laughs> like that's that's a lot of weeklies for five days from now. Um, hmm, to have it climb twenty bucks in that time to go in the money, that is very 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 hopeful. I'm wondering if. Someone knows something and they aren't saying, saying spit. Uh, Chad Anderson, Houston, happy birthday. Need your brain for debunking flat earth claims about the earth not being able to contain gas without a firmament or being enclosed. Uh, gravity. Gravity is how the earth maintains an atmosphere. Uh, the whole reason you are on the surface of the earth is because of gravity. And the whole reason gas and liquid and everything else is on the surface of the earth it's because of gravity. So flat earthers who don't understand the concept of gravity 
are just dumb. Like in their brains, they're like, but we're accelerating upwards like an elevator. And that gives us a sensation that gravity exists, but it's not gravity. And it, it, it is gravity. Like, okay, to, to get the sensation of gravity, you need constant acceleration. So what's causing the earth to constantly accelerate to give us the sensation of gravity, right? What power source is doing that? You need constant application of force in order to accelerate. And if we've been accelerating for 4.5 billion years, what's been accelerating us? And why is the sun accelerating at the same time as us? So it's accelerating the sun. Why are the other planets accelerating things at the exact same speed? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Like, why, why is there a force acting on a flat Earth that's causing us to accelerate, but the sun, which is obviously more massive than we are, somehow keeps up with us? That doesn't make any sense. Don't make no sense. Right? Uh, but if you have a ball, right, and normal force is in from all sides of that ball, no matter which direction you're on, then the normal force also is the same for the atmosphere and the water and everything else holding all that in. Now, if you're small, like the size of Mercury or Venus, no, sorry, the size of Mercury or the moon, uh, you don't have enough gravity to maintain atmosphere. So anytime an energetic particle, particle comes along from the sun and hits what could have been your atmosphere, it excites that element so much that it goes, wee, and reaches escape velocity and disappears forever. If you get further out where it's nice and cold, right? past Mars to the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus. Uh, then by the time solar particles reach the atmosphere of those planets, there's not enough energy to bounce those little molecules away. So if it hits a hydrogen molecule, the hydrogen molecule does not care because the gravity is so powerful from Jupiter, Saturn, that it just sits there and maintains itself in the atmosphere of those, of those large planets. This thing called the frost line. And the frost line is kind of where these volatiles that normally would get excited away out of the atmospheres of small planets can now hang out on the big boys. <clears throat> so when when you release the little party balloon and the helium goes up to the top of the atmosphere and the pop balloon pops and then the helium reaches the upper atmosphere, it gets blown away in the solar winds, heads on out into the outer reaches of outer space and may get trapped by the gravity wells of Jupiter or Saturn and add to the mass of those two planets. <clears throat> so there you go. I forgot to get myself water and my throat is very dry right now. <sighs> Do I get up and go get water? I'm gonna get what's water. One sec. Give me one moment. I'm so thirsty. <clears throat> Don't need a full glass of water. Just like three sips and I'm good to go. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, you know what? While I'm doing that, I should have just filled water while I hit this. Thing. moving yeah are you too comfy are you too comfy to get a nuggie are you too comfortable monkey oh I'll stretch it out I know it's a tough sleep I just woke you up from look at it right here you want that no oh, yeah now you're excited but come on come on yeah come get it right right there come on come on arr, 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 arr. got it oh he just did a big old drool all right, we got one more decent sized one. Ooh, I need to turn off the nuggy stare. Go to the large monkey. Jaws cam. Rawr. It's so good. It's so good. Okay. Stinky beef. Back up top. I have to get some more, more nuggets for you, buddy. Okay. Where was I? Brandon Wells, after Moas, I would like to join you guys in one of those digs. No Diddy. <laughs> no, Diddy's not invited. Um, I I really do. 
I need to get a war rig working again, and then I should organize like a week long desert adventure. And anyone who has a four wheel drive can come along, and we will adventure across the desert, look for cool stuff, see like petroglyphs and ancient sites, and go dig some gold and gemstones. It'd be a fun trip. Crap! I need to get that stuff. I need, I need to get my I need to get my shit in order. That's what I need to do. Sal 20th super chat. Well, thank you there, sad boy. I just realized that nice. Thank you. Uh, it's a link to it's from you're saying you, you post an article about how Jimmy could easily squeeze. It's a link to an article about a guy that accidentally caused a short squeeze in 2005. I think banks control hedge funds. Oh, sorry, that's a different one. All right, let's see. Let's uh, bring him. Okay, close that. Go there. Go back. Sad boy. Uh, when was it posted? Oh, naked short and curious instead of the shares that didn't exist. Shows and oh, this, this is the article that you posted. Naked shorting the curious incident of the shares that didn't exist. So shareholders and executives and some of the U.S. smallest listed companies believe their share prices have been forced down by illegal naked shorting. This has led to a number of lawsuits claiming unscrupulous behavior by brokers and market makers exploiting loopholes uh, in central clearing system. Those implicated dismiss the allegations as rubbish. What's going on? So this is 2005. In February of this year, Michigan-based entrepreneur Robert Simpson decided to see what happened. Also, oh, the guy. This is the guy that that bought the entire float of a company. So he bought 1.258 million shares and he put them in a sock drawer and then like 60 million shares traded the next day, right? Yeah, 37 million traded one day and 22 million shares the, the, the day later. Neither day had said Simpson traded any of it. <clears throat> so yeah, that's this is the most crazy. This, this, this is where I got the idea for the honeypot, right? Is that if you have a million share float, those shares would probably cost a dollar or two. It's a very small float, right? So... Buy up the float. <laughs> buy up, not just the float, buy up the float and then buy up all the shares the insiders would have and then buy up more than that. And then announce you're going to take the company private at a cost of a million dollars a share. Ta-da! Shorts are screwed. Not only that, but because you now own more shares than what you're supposed to own, you get to sell off a whole bunch of your shares for a million dollars each to all those short hedge funds. So, Yeah. Absolutely crazy. But yeah, let's, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's absolutely do it. I'm all, I'm all for it. Alex Bishop, I think banks control hedge funds, short positions. They just don't want to close. Oh no, they can't afford it. They, no one can afford to close. They've, they've let these guys get away with so much that it's, it's one of those things like if you owe the bank a dollar, that's your problem. If you owe the bank a million dollars, it's their problem. That type of thing. Like, they don't want to close this stuff because they can't afford to close it. And they know they can't afford to close it. <clears throat> ba, 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 Benny. The people are too informed. The corruption needs to change. Thanks, Houston, for your work. I love your balanced approach. Very entertaining. Thank you. Thank you. Don't seize your shade. Seagull. I'm with you on that, but I'm too much of a wimp to buy in quantity. No. <clears throat> Thrasher Canary. Solving the homeless problem sounds easy, but we have so many entrenched vested interests, it will take more courage than both parties combined to have. Yeah, you, you, the, the charities don't want to give up their space, right? Because that's their entire existence. They're, it's like... One of the big groups that was fighting creating a, a universal healthcare system in the United States were unions because the unions unions fought really 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 hard to get their really incredible health insurance right we try to explain to them like no if everybody has incredible insurance view through universal health care then you can fight really really hard to get better pay for all of your workers no we fought too hard for this like it it doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> it's just do you want to have a better society or do you want to 
lose money every year into a giant pit of despair that is like Aetna and Blue Cross Blue Shield and Kaiser and all these groups just <sighs> like one of the problems here in the Northwest is hospital consolidation. So Franciscan Healthcare, which is this Catholic Jesuit uh, hospital system, has been buying everybody up. And for being Jesuits, who you know, if you're a Jesuit, you 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 devote your life to poverty. That's as a Jesuit, you're like I am poor. I will, I will not go for monetary things. I will strive to live a simple life and do good, right? For a Jesuit charity to be buying up all these hospitals, and then it seems like only the bottom line matters, doesn't make any sense to me. Plus, something like seven over 70% of the hospitals and doctor's offices in the Northwest are owned by the Catholic Church. But the Northwest has the lowest number of religious people in the entire country. So we have a population that's like 70, 80% non-religious, and their only options for going to their local hospital or doctor's office is a Catholic charity. It's a very weird, weird situation. Uh, and Franciscan sucks. Every hospital they touch, they ruin. Um we had a hospital system called Harrison here locally in my Kitsap County where I am. And Harrison had one big hospital in Bremerton, a medium sized hospital, the next town up in Silverdale. And then here on Bainbridge, they built an urgent care clinic and they spent $30 million building this urgent care clinic. And, uh, as they're building this urgent care clinic, they get bought by Franciscans. So all the hospitals turn into like St. Michael's and St. So-and-so and St. This and that. And then the urgent care clinic finally opens. So people are like, hey, finally we've got urgent care on the island. This is fantastic. I don't have to like go to Seattle or drive an hour away to Bremerton to like, you know, get stitches or whatever. So they go to this urgent care clinic. And then when they get their bill later, their insurance doesn't want to cover it because it's billing them at emergency care costs, which are like four times what the urgent care costs should be. And then all of a sudden, word goes around on Facebook and the community pages. People are like, don't go to the urgent care because they charge you emergency room prices, not urgent care prices. And then all of a sudden Franciscans like, no one's going to our urgent care. So we're going to go close it. Well, if you just charge them normal urgent care prices, people would still go to the urgent care clinic, but you were charging them emergency room prices. Word got out. They ripping everyone off. So yeah, people stopped going. I don't, uh, it's like, Baseball. <laughs> We're going to talk baseball for a second. The Mariners. Love of my life. Mariners are my team. They're my home team, right? For the past three years, they've been the most profitable team in baseball. They're making 70, 80, 100 million dollars a year profit. Largely because they own the TV network all their games are showing on. Right? So you own the TV network. You don't have to pay any rights to anybody. You own the network. You're getting cable fees and advertising directly. You're just making money hand over fist. It's great. This year, the owners of the Mariners are like, you know what? We're going to charge 20 bucks a month for the cable channel that holds the Mariners games. And everybody who had it included in their basic cable package were like, nope. And 1.6 million subscribers no longer watch Mariners games because they don't get them in their homes because they're not going to pay $20 a month to watch a TV that then sends advertisements to them as well. And now the Mariners are like, we don't, we're going to lose so much money. This is crazy. Why are we losing so much money? Well, because you did not do a cost-benefit analysis, draw a parabola and figure out like, you know, for every dollar we raise, we raise our price, we lose this many customers, right? And so you want to find that happy medium between the number of customers you satisfy and the amount of money you can charge and that peak of that parabola, that's what you charge. What instead you did is you went from this side of the parabola all the way over to this side of the parabola and you lost all your customers. <laughs> like, it's... There you go. All you're doing is you're inviting people to go on the internet and figure out ways to pirate your baseball games. You're not going to get a penny off any of those viewers. Right. They're not going to go to your games because, you know, they're not because now they're like, uh, I can't see them on TV. So who gives a shit anymore? And you just alienated a whole bunch of your baseball fans. And you're now you're losing money like crazy. The Mariners are taking their business cues from Franciscan Healthcare, And. 
everything's getting inshittified. The inshittification of America continues. Uh, Jealous Money 9501. Why is AMC going to go to zero? That makes no sense to me. Uh, they can't make a profit. They've got $5 billion in uh, debt. And their CEO sucks. It's going to dilute the shares until it goes to zero. I mean, he could do another reverse split. We probably will do another reverse split, but that's just that just continues the debt cycle. Then you just issue more shares, you do reverse split again, you issue more shares, and just dilutes everyone's like you're down 99% from, from the highs in 2021 right now. Down 99% across the board. <coughs> so uh, AMC is what three bucks right now? Uh AMC share price. 301. <sighs> okay, back to the calculator. Throw off the Chrome calculator. All right, so the price is three dollars and one cent. Now, the 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 high in Ju June twenty twenty one. Right now, it was seventy seven dollars, seven hundred and seventy dollars, because it did ten for one reverse split. Right. So that means you are down ninety nine point six one percent. You're down ninety nine point six one percent since the high of June, 2021. And if he does another reverse split, right? Does another reverse split, does a 10 to one. So all of a sudden this thing, the stock becomes worth 30 bucks, but you have one tenth as many. Then that means the high was $7,700 in June of 2021. And he gives the shorts another ability to just hammer that thing down from $30 and for people with puts to make even more money along the way. And then Adam Aaron dilute, sells more shares in the market, dilutes it even more and drives it right back down again. <clears throat> He's just absolutely putting into a death spiral. And that's, that's it. He, he didn't, he didn't do what he should have done three years ago. And because my guess is, is that his job was to put them into a debt spiral and that's where they are. So, you know, he took the goodwill. He took the uh, fame that came along with it. And he absolutely squandered it and enriched himself by hundreds of millions of dollars in the process. I mean, he's got over a hundred million dollars in stock, cash, bonuses, and salary since 2020 and they paid off what 200 million of their five point something billion dollars in debt in that time just mm, mm. this stock at 301 is equivalent of 30 cents in 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 2000 in 2021 so from 77 dollars to 30 cents that's the distance that the stock has traveled. So yeah, unless they have someone come along and buy them up, they're they're probably headed towards bankruptcy without diluting even more. So they're gonna have to dilute, and they're gonna have to do a reverse split. They're gonna have to dilute. They're gonna have to do a reverse split. They're gonna have to dilute. And they're just gonna keep doing that until they pay off the the debt. And by then, all of your investments in AMC will be completely worthless. So that's the cycle they're in. That's 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 how the hedge funds do it. That's how they ruin you. Um, Trey Spider made it here. Ba 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 Benny. I wonder if it will work like a seesaw and that good people in retail get made whole. We pursue a life of philanthropy and momentum helps change the world. That's my goal. I I would love to help people if I can. There's no way I could spend a kajillion dollars. I just can't. Like you can only live for so many years, right? Uh, yeah. 306 PM. Julio says another quake just hit New York. Did they get an aftershock. Let's quick for New Jersey. 4.8 magnitude. Oh, it's 4.8, not 4.3. That's pretty, pretty decent size. 4.8. Four, mag four magnitude aftershock from this morning's quake in New Jersey just occurred. Oh, there you go. You got 4.0 aftershock. Cool. 4.0 aftershock hit 37 miles west of New York City near Gladstone, New Jersey. At 6 p.m. struck 9.7 kilometers deep. So this one's a little deeper <clears throat> than the four point whatever that was the first one. So that sounds like the fault is settling a little further down. Interesting. Cool. Oh, sirens outside my window. That's rare. Interesting. 
So I missed that one by an hour because I'm that's how far behind in the chat I am. <laughs> <clears throat> A little beanie lurker fishing fix. There you go. Llama Design Labs wrong. Correct answer is J. Cole. I'm disappointed, Mr. Wade. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Uh, my pronouns are bull bear. Hey, Houston, do you still do the GoFundMe uh, poster? I found a uh, litter of puppies in Puerto Rico. I adopted four and three. I'm trying to bring back with me. Um, yes, but the the GoFundMe poster next one's going to be for Beto because uh, he's broken both legs and that sucks. That that puts him at this huge disadvantage trying to uh, earn income for his family. So that'll, that'll be the next one for now. But uh, I'm glad you have puppies. They're fun. Thursday Productions. Have you seen Thunderstorm Generator? Randall Carlson talks about it in the Sean Ryan show. It creates multiple vortexes and runs clean, plasma-based, apparently. I've never heard of that. Thursday Productions. I'll have to look that up. Thunderstorm Generator. Hmm. Hmm. Or cheap way to get them back from uh, Puerto Rico. Remember you saying something about monkey getting shipped for free? Well, monkey... So... Alaska Airlines has a program. I'm not sure if it's if they do it, take animals from elsewhere, but from Hawaii, there's not enough people in Hawaii to adopt the animals. This is a small population. And then if they get out in the woods and they procreate a whole bunch and there's more, more animals, the people available to adopt. So Alaska Airlines partners with Humane Society and will fill up the belly of a plane full of a whole bunch of dogs and cats and then fly them somewhere to non-kill shelters and bring them to the non-kill shelters for free. So monkey butt came on a flight, uh, a puppy flight from Hawaii uh, to here to the, the Silverdale Kitsap Humane Society. And that's where I got her. Uh, I'm sure that there might be something similar out of Puerto Rico. Um, I would contact the Puerto Rico Humane Society and see if they, if they know of an airline that does something similar. Um, that'd be why I suggest. <clears throat> uh, JL2023, I heard the speed of light is more about the speed of causation. Is that false oversimplification? The speed of light is the same for any observer. So if you're traveling 900 miles an hour and you turn on a flashlight, that flashlight travels the speed of light relative to you. But with an outside observer, what they see is that is a different wavelength of light than what you're emitting. So if they're coming towards you, that light will be blue shifted. If you're going away from them, the light will be red shifted. But to both of you, it's traveling the speed of light. Uh, that's as best as I can explain that. Low B, Interstellar, great movie. I'd say Low B, Interstellar is a well-made movie with some really terrible physics. <laughs> and they bragged about how they brought an astrophysicist to like guarantee everything. I watched that movie and I was like, duh, nothing about this was physically accurate. Um, but it's still a good movie. Still well, really well-made movie, cool plot, stuff like that. Uh, Alex Bishop, if you travel this with the speed of light, does everything get dark for you? Well, depends on which direction you're looking. If you are looking forward, then all you see are basically gamma ray bursts in your eyeballs and you're just getting shredded by, by uh, uh, a radiation. If you look behind you, you don't see anything because the light can't reach you yet. There's some weird things that can happen. So, uh, a black hole. Right, black hole, the single point infinitely dense 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 point of light or point of point of space of mass and you have this thing called the event horizon which is where no light can escape like light's trying to escape and it just can't so at the event horizon it can't escape anymore at the event horizon the orbital velocity is the speed of light in order to maintain orbit around a black hole at where the event horizon is you have to be traveling the speed of light and uh, so if you were the indestructible man or woman and you were to fall into a black hole. As you pass through the event horizon, if you were to look horizontally, like on the tangent of the curve of the event horizon, what's crazy is there's light being reflected or emitting from your body. You're emitting light at radio waves and you're reflecting invisible light, right? 
uh, that light leaves your body. It travels at the speed of light around the event horizon. So if you look out as you're falling through the event horizon, it's like slow time down. You're slowing through the event horizon. And you look out along that tangent. You will see the light that's emitting from your butt and you'll see your butt. <laughs> you turn around and you'll see your butt. And you look that way and you see your butt. Everywhere you turn and look, you see your butt because the light is leaving your butt, traveling around the event horizon, entering your eyeballs. It's very weird. If you're falling into, event, into the event horizon and you look out, up into space, right? You're approaching the speed of light as you hit the, as you hit the event horizon, which means time is dilating. You're becoming pure energy. Uh, and because light is able to bend around the event horizon, okay? Light's able to, from everywhere in the universe, light at any tangent is able to hit that, hit that event horizon just right and bend around. You can see it. You can see the entirety of the universe as you fall into the event horizon. Probably looks like a big giant blinding light. But as you approach the speed of light and when you hit the speed of light, as you pass through the event horizon, you become pure energy, which means time stops for you. Any experience of time you have Anyone outside observing you just ages and disappears, right? They just turn to dust and blow away. So you can watch, as you fall into the event horizon, the death of the universe happen. If you were an outside observer watching the indestructible person fall into the event horizon, you would never see them fall in. Because the light slows down and gets trapped, essentially, and can't leave that, that spot and because of the difference of time dilation, you're out here observing them, watching them. They're reaching the speed of light, but for some reason it looks like they're trapped there forever because the light isn't able to escape and you wither to dust and die the time it takes them to fall in. It is very weird mindfuck territory. And when I teach my, I think it's week eight of my intro to astronomy course, that's the week that I break all their brains with relativity. And the class is, the class is only like 30, 40, 30 45 minutes long. Because they break their brains so badly that they can't absorb any more information. <clears throat> and then I ruin all their classes for the rest of the week because they're sitting there like thinking about falling into black holes and time dilation and everything else. And they don't hear anything else the teachers say. <clears throat> it's my favorite week to teach. It's short class. All their brains are broken and it's a good time. Okay. Um... Frozen State Productions. How do you think the pyramids were built? Vibration tech, hydraulics. I don't see logs being technique. I think the pyramids were probably built by using a million slaves over the course of hundreds of years. <laughs> that's that's my guess. Is that is that they just used manpower and they're like, you do this or I'll kill you. And people are like, I guess I'm doing that. And then you get a whole bunch of people doing something because they're forced to. Eventually, shit gets built. That's my my my. I think. And then we got their eclipse goggles. Not everyone got their eclipse goggles. Uh, Julio didn't get his. Um, if you didn't get yours, I'm sorry. They may have like, gotten ripped open in the machine or something. But those of you who got them, I'm glad you did. Those who didn't get them, I apologize a million times. Uh, 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 eclipse tickets are sending me some more, but they're gonna they're getting here too late for me to send any more out. So, uh, 40 years from now, when there's another eclipse, off glasses for you. <laughs> Project Productions, B PDD's body count is reviving the Clintons. He had Tupac killed, set up Big in LA, killed ex-girlfriends, boyfriends, killed at least two ex-girlfriends. <clears throat> I mean, I have no idea about the veracity of that, but uh, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I watched this comedian the day. I posted, I posted a link under under one of the uh, PDD things in the, in the uh, subreddit. Talking about how PDD's dad was like old school gangster like pdd grew up watching people get murdered in front of him and that he's like old school get what's the guy what was the guy what did he say he said uh terrible rapper but incredible villain <laughs> i do think pdd puff daddy is the worst rapper ever he's terrible so terrible i cannot think of a song of his that i've enjoyed um but yeah he's a great villain fantastic villain <clears throat> 
Five four twenty six. I got four minutes left, monkey butt. <laughs> hey, you know, Moan, every time I stop thinking about the Wanda Fuqua plate, you bring it up like clockwork. <laughs> it's okay. You're far away. You don't have to worry about it. You're in Mexico or whatever. Uh, Zoom, Zoom, Opie. Houston. Sorry, I haven't listened in a while. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty good. Don't see a shade and mitigate the like button. <laughs> Hit it. Like, subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, Fred Jones. I think the MMTLP on a podcast, Steve Gruber, someone just called in and asked him to look into it. Ah, okay. I don't know who Steve Gruber is, but fantastic. Turkish. I'm running late. Houston, sup? Uh, sup? Still twirling for Bobby. Can you please tweet RC where the F is the money Lebowski? I can't because I'm I'm not allowed to tweet on Twitter. I got banned for being mean to Nazis. So I can look at tweets. I can look at five tweets a day. So people can send me links. I can look at five tweets. And when I try to look at a sixth tweet, then I'm blocked for 24 hours from looking at any more tweets. I've tried creating a new account and I have to have to get a new computer and a new phone because they've banned my machine address, my Mac address. So, uh, yeah, the best I can do is look at five tweets a day and that's all I get. And then I get rate limited for 24 hours until I can see five more tweets again. <clears throat> Doobie Waffle, I want to see some ancient ruins. I just go to Washington, D.C. <laughs> um... Uh, do, do, do. Okay. I got three minutes left. Let's see if we can find some. <clears throat> uh, my pronouns are bull bear. Is grandpa Barney still around? I've been able to watch much lately. I've not seen grandpa Barney in here in a while. Um, when was the last time grandpa Barney showed up? It's been months. He, uh, he used to text message me every once in a while, but no, I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen him in a while. Hmm. What was up to? I should text message him. Reach out, see what's see what's up. Um... Paul M. Okay, this is complete tinfoil territory. But what if Ryan Cohen is hiring these guys for the purpose? of disguising his messages as clever adjacent name puns. <laughs> um I mean it's funny. <laughs> it's some it's some real classic trolling. That's 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 what they're going for. Uh Donna Bell, funny you said that. I met a couple that knows you when I was in Mexico last November. See? Or even like Sayulita or something, because that's where all the Bainbridge people have like retired to. They all go to Sayulita. But yeah, it's it's weird. It's very weird. You, you only travel, you you the world gets really small all of a sudden. Because most people don't get to go see the world. And they don't know how to go see the world. So again, they go to like Disney World, they go on a cruise. Uh that's that's what they do. So when when you when you head out and into the wild, into places where not many may travel. You start to meet really unique individuals. And oh no, Max headrooming again. Right at the end, right at 4.30. Okay, well, I got to go anyway. So, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. Okay. Is that, is that it for my day? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Max headrooming. Monkey butt. You want to say goodbye to everybody? When I Max headroom and I do... A, a an outro what what happens what happens if i hit this butterfly one <clears throat> while i'm max head drumming oh color came back